Hello and welcome back to Real English with Real Teachers. Today we've got a really important lesson for you if you are planning on studying abroad in a foreign country in which the spoken language is English. On top of that, it's going to help you with your general English skills, your listening, your speaking, your reading, your writing and vocabulary. Before we get started, we'd like to mention one other thing that can massively improve your English speaking skills. It's the Lingoda Language Marathon. And we're going to talk about this in full at the end of this video. If you want to know about all the details right away, you can go to the time shown on the video now. Basically, it's 90 days of English lessons with native speakers and if you do all of them, you will be refunded the whole amount. That is saving up to 800 euros. Pretty insane. But before all that, let's learn some English, shall we? You're watching Real English with Real Teachers. Real Teachers. Hello, Charlie. Uh, welcome to your, your first Lingoda lesson in the, the marathon. Hello. How are you? Hello. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to get going. What have we got today, Professor Harry Giles? Well, I heard from a little birdie that you were thinking of moving abroad. I saw it on your Lingoda profile. And uh, I thought, well, why don't we talk about the experience of going abroad? And maybe we could teach you some expressions some vocabulary that will come in handy or that will be useful for you uh, when you do travel to an English-speaking country because, let's face it, uh, your English is a bit rusty. Oh, well, thank you very much for the stalking and the insult there for the introduction. I appreciate it. You Lingoda teachers clearly go above and beyond to find out more about their students before you've ever met them. But uh, you're quite right, I'm looking forward to uh, going, well, I'm, I'm already abroad, but uh, going abroad, even further abroad. Oh, where are you heading? Australia. Oh, you're heading to Australia? Yes, I am. Ah, oh, okay, so heading, that's a, this is a good way to say you're going somewhere. If you meet someone new when you're traveling, Charlie, um, and they, they'll probably ask you in an Australian accent, where are you heading, mate? Ah, okay. Where are you heading, mate? Very good. Mm, okay, where are you going? Where are you going? Very good, yeah. And now can you say it in a, in a British accent? Where are you heading, sir? Oh, wow. Very nice. What about in American English? Um, American. Where are you heading, mate? <laughs> no, that's, no. Wait. You, that's Australian again. Ah, uh, buddy. You are right, buddy? No? But Still Australian. Oh my god! Where are you heading? Where are you heading? Very good. There you go. Where are you heading, hey? <laughs> that's Canadian. Yeah. Anyway, um, so that's a good expression for you to use when you, when you do go travelling, Charlie. Um, and I want to start this lesson off with a little discussion. How do you think travelling abroad could benefit you, Charlie? Oh. Oh. Um, well, I think it could benefit me in many ways. Uh, to start with, I'll be able to learn the culture of another entire country. Uh, I get to see new interesting cities that have different shops and different um, landscapes, uh, architecture. Yeah! Um, I'm clutching, I'm clutching at straws here, but uh, I can't wait. It's going to be great. Charlie, that's really great. You're right. You're going to learn a lot about the culture. Um, so there's a really good expression that you could use. Another good one, um, which means that you want to kind of learn as much as you can and absorb yourself in the culture. And it's to it begin. Well, let's see. Maybe you already know it. Maybe you already know it. It begins with an L, uh, this is the verb, and then the preposition begins with a U. To l... ah. To lick. Not lick, no. To live, <laughs> to... I'll give you a clue. You can sit on, you can sit on it. L sit on my... Lung. No, you can't sit on anyone's lungs, that would be really painful. Lap. 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 Oh, lap is all up. 
Yes, to lap it all up. Lap it all up, or you could say, lap up the culture. I want to lap up the Australian culture. Yeah, not lick up, I want to lap up. I want to lap up the Australian culture. Yes, I lack the vocabulary for this class. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to lap up as much of your wisdom that you have to offer. <laughs> well, you're in the right place, Charlie. You have chosen, I mean, there are lots of teachers on Lingodis. You didn't have to choose one with me, but you did actually choose a very wise one. Ah. So, well done. Oh, good, okay. How did you become so wise? Um, probably all the red wine. <laughs> nah, this is just, um, just juice, just a cherry drink. Here, yeah, there you go, just in case you didn't believe me. I never drink during lessons. Never do, only, only after if the student's really annoying. <laughs> so that's a really good one. Can you repeat that after me? I'm going to lap up the Australian culture. I'm going to lap up the Australian culture. I'm gonna lap it up. I'm gonna lap it up. And then I'm gonna lick it up. And then I'm gonna lick it up. Very good. Okay, Charlie. So imagine you are going on a trip to a place which is on your bucket list. You're going to have to take a lot of things there because you're probably going there for a couple of years, right? Maybe, yeah. Don't tell the parents. <laughs> have you not told your parents yet? Why would I tell them that? No, I've told them that we're going, but I haven't told them how long. I bet they were be beside themselves with worry when they first heard this. <laughs> they were. No, they weren't. Just my mum, stressed to... stressed to something. <laughs> Teacher, what could you say? Well, well, you could say that. You could say she would, but she was beside herself with worry. Yes, but I want something about stress. Um, she was stressed out of her mind. Very good. Yes, that's what I wanted. She was stressed out of her mind. You are a very good teacher. Thank you. And you are a very good student. Oh, stop it. Uh, so we're going to talk about your luggage and what you're taking with you to Australia. And I want you to list as much useful vocabulary when it comes to packing your bags. And I'll help you out here as well. Okay, well, I um, will need my credit card, um, hard drive for all those movies that we'll be making. Absolutely. Will you need your tripod? My tripod, yeah. Or toilet roll? Yeah, my mum always said to me, always take a spare toilet roll when you go traveling. You never know. You never know. Better safe than sorry. Yeah! Better safe than sorry. Very nice. Yeah, I'm the teacher here. Oh, yes. Yeah, better safe than sorry. Um, it's a good, good, good expression to say well, when you, you need to kind of take extra precautions about something. Like Charlie, he's going on a long voyage, a long journey, and uh, there might not be toilet roll when he gets there. <laughs> it's probably during the trip. Not when he gets there. <laughs> or there might not be toilet roll on the aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Australia doesn't know what blue paper is. They might not have invented it yet. Yeah, I heard you just meant to use a kind of kangaroo's tail or something. Yeah, that is a good option. They are aggressive though. Ah, oh, I'll need my phone. You'll need your, your driving licence. I'll need my suitcase. That's true. Yeah, you need to... <laughs> you gonna are you gonna pack your, uh, a smaller suitcase in your big suitcase, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> just in suitcase. Uh, you need you need your uh, you need these. You will need your headphones so you can listen to uh, your podcast on the plane. Most definitely. Yeah, I need my charger, and you need your spare charger as well. And I'll need my my cream for my sore thumb from my surfing injury. <laughs> I saw thumb. <laughs> I mean, oh, I hope your thumb's okay. Oh, thanks. Student. <laughs> and, <coughs> and I'll need my grammar book, won't I? Yes, you will. Aren't you a fantastic student? So, Charlie, what are you actually going to be doing over in Australia when you go there? Oh, um, I'm going to be studying English. <laughs> Okay, right, good. So, you're going to need some vocabulary for when you go to the university, right? Most definitely. What do you think in the UK we say for the first year of university? Um, we normally say it's your first year. Yeah, so you'd say, I'm in first year, right? I'm in my first year. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then a person who's in first year, how would you say that? They're in their first year. Yeah, but yeah, but who are they? I mean, what, what, what would you call those, that person? Ah, they're first year students. No, no, they're freshers. Oh, for f sake! <laughs> so exactly, we say, it's my first year. But in America, they don't say that, they say, freshman year. Whoa! I know! And what about the second year? What do you think they call that in England? The second year? <laughs> Very good! What about in America? Uh, sophomore? That's correct! You're annoying little students, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about the third year? What do you think we call that in the UK? Third year! Very good! What about in America? Um, sophomore plus one year. D really? You don't you know? No! <laughs> I'm a student, tell me. <laughs> It's, it's junior. It's my junior year. Oh, junior year. Okay. Um, and then the fourth year, what do you think we call that? In British English? Yeah. Uh, it means your gap year or you're lost at life and you don't know what to do because we only have three years of education normally. Yes. What they call it in, in America is they call it your senior year. Okay. So what's the, what's the conclusion of this part of the lesson? It was a waste of time. American English is too complicated. Just stick to British English. Alright, Charlie, you've done amazingly well today. Um, what do you think of the, the lesson, the experience? Oh, I think it was great, yeah. I think the teacher made it really special for me. Oh, that's really cute. You're not, you're not just saying that, are you? Definitely not. No, I'd never say that just to please you. Oh, oh, that's amazing. So out of all of the lessons you've had on Lingoda, would you say this is probably your favourite one? Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're uh, leaps and bounds ahead of the other teachers. Wow, you didn't learn that expression with me. I learned it with a better, I mean, uh, another teacher. Who? It's not, not Graham, is it? He's a... Not Graham. No, it's not Graham. Oh, whatever. Anyway. Thank you for your participation today. What I'd like to do now is recap the lesson and go over some of the most important vocabulary, expressions, and things that have come up during this lesson. So, uh, I'm going to remind you, and then you can tell me what the words are, what the phrases are, yeah? Okay, looking forward to it. Hit me. Fantastic. So, imagine you're going on a trip, and someone stops you and says, where are you going? But they didn't say where are you going, they said it in a different way. I think I've got this. Where are you heading? Where are you heading? Perfect, very good. Okay, now imagine you've got a list of things that you want to do before you die, but we don't call it that, we call it our... Bucket list. Bucket list, excellent. N not your f***ing list. I won't tolerate swearing in my lessons, Charlie. Shall I? Outside. Just, just button it. It's another expression. That means be quiet. We can also say put a sock in it. I'm trying to teach here. Teaching through discipline. That's impressive, even for you. Put a sock in it. As I was saying, another good expression that came out today. Um, imagine you want to immerse yourself in the culture and learn as much as possible. You could say, I'm going to lap it up. I'm going to lap it up. I'm going to lap up the culture. I'm going to lap up the culture. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so anything else coming to your mind that you've learned today? Have you learned any other useful vocabulary? Anything that was new to you? What's springing to mind? What was this? What was this thing? A tripod. Tripod. Good. And this was a toilet roll or a bog roll? Bog roll. Very good. Bog roll. Very informal bog roll. But um, yeah, we can also call the toilet a bog or the bog. Um, so if you, were, if you wanted to say you were going to go to the toilet, how would you say that? I'm going to go to the bog with my bog roll. Very good, yeah. So remember guys, take your bog roll with you wherever you're going. Okay Charlie, so you've done really, really well today. I want you to uh, you know, take this vocab with you and use it, because otherwise, what happens? You lose it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you lose it, I don't want that to happen. So. Your homework, what I want you to do is take all of the interesting new vocabulary that you have found today and I want you to put it into a fantastic story. Oh, 
a story. I like telling stories. Do you? I love them. Well done in today's lesson. Enjoy the rest of your marathon. Remember, you need to take a lesson every single day for the next three months, and then you'll get all your money back. Thank you very much. I look forward to uh, starting this marathon and hearing all about the specifications. <laughs> Yeah, one last thing, Charlie, it's, it's the, the specifics. Oh yes, the specifics of the course. Yes. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, before you signed up for the marathon, you, you should have read the specifics, but... Oh. See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. See you, Charlie. Okay, so to avoid signing up before you find out the specifics, not the specifications, Charlie, we want to tell you about the details of the Lingoda Language Marathon right now, which is available for you in English, Business English, Spanish, French and German. And we all know the best way to learn a language and retain the vocabulary is to do it bit by bit, to do it every day. And to do this with a native speaker is ideal. But it's not always possible because of the time it takes to travel or the money it costs to get a native speaker to be with you one-on-one. -on -one. So Lingoda have come up with a really affordable, convenient solution. If you haven't heard of Lingoda before, it's an online language school where you can study with native, qualified English teachers and you don't even have to leave your home because all you need to have is a stable internet connection. The lessons are done in groups. On average, you will find about three students per class. And because it's all done on your laptop, there's no need to travel anywhere. That's right. You can do it in the evenings. You can do it at 5 a.m. in the morning if you really want on a weekend. And I've actually been doing it on the weekend for Spanish for quite some time now, almost a year, I think. And the reason that I love Lingoda is not only its flexibility around my schedule, which is pretty random, uh, but it's also the feeling of comfort in my own environment. So Lingoda really suits me. But Harry, tell us about the marathon, the Lingoda language marathon. What is it? Well, it's a three month English course, which involves taking one group lesson every single day for three months. The main aim being to boost your fluency and your confidence in speaking English as quick as possible. And to give you an extra push, an extra source of motivation, Lingoda have said that if you complete this marathon and you do a group lesson every day for three months, you get all of your money back, which is up to 800 euros of English lessons for free. It's an amazing opportunity and we really do think it's doable. In fact, many students do complete the whole marathon every year at Lingoda. But if you think that is too much for you, then there is the half marathon, which gives you 15 lessons a month instead of 30. And if you manage to complete three months of the half marathon, you will be given half the amount back. If you are interested in taking the marathon in English, then you have two options. The first option is the standard English marathon, which is for your general English skills, your fluency development, confidence building, learning new vocabulary, and generally getting more comfortable in using the language. And this one is available in all levels from beginner to advanced. We then have the second option, which is the business English marathon. And this is for those of you who want to advance your career in English. You want to get better in interviews, in business meetings, in delivering presentations, writing emails. And this one is only available for the B2 level and above. The marathon runs from the 21st of January to the 20th of April 2019. And after speaking with previous marathon runners and Lingoda, their best advice is to book your lessons in advance so you can be sure that the schedule will align with yours, thus not missing any lessons. And this year, for the first time ever, Lingoda are giving you the opportunity for a limited time only to pay now and immediately get the first month's credit for you to use, book up and get ready for the beginning of the marathon. So it's essentially an early bird offer, which is rewarding 
your early participation in this marathon. And we strongly encourage you to take it because not only does it make the marathon more achievable, more doable, but it also gives you 10% off your first payment and there's no need to pay an entry fee. So to take advantage of this wonderful offer, all you need to do is click the Lingoda link in the description box. And when you get to the payment page, select the pay now option. And then you can use our voucher code, study9, which will get you enrolled straight away and Lingoda will send you your first batch of classes, which you can start booking right away. For those of you who need a little bit more time to mull it over, to, to think about it, you have until the 14th of January at the latest to sign up to the marathon. Remember, spaces are limited, so we encourage you to do so sooner rather than later. And when you sign up, you will need to pay a five euro fee, but use our voucher code STUDY9 and you will only need to pay 50 cents. After securing your place on the marathon, you'll automatically sign up for a three month long subscription and every month you'll be charged a fixed amount. Except those of you who choose to pay now, you'll be given 10% off your first payment. If you sign up and then you decide you don't want to take part, you've had a change of heart, don't worry because you still have 14 days from the date that you signed up to either cancel your first payment or to get a full refund on your first payment. So Charlie, when you complete the marathon, how do you get all your money back? Show me the money, baby. Lingoda will refund you in full if you attend every single class. There really is no catch here. So long as you read the terms and conditions, you understand the guidelines, which are essentially turn up, be active, don't miss a class, you will get the refund. And if you miss a class or you fail to book, then you can still carry on with the marathon but you're not eligible for the refund anymore. Remember that places on this marathon are limited. Just like the London Marathon, we can't have everyone participating. The streets of London would be chaos. So to avoid disappointment, we encourage you to sign up ASAP and take advantage of that pay now option. The most important nugget of advice that we can muster up for you today is that you really familiarize yourself very well with the rules of the marathon in the terms and conditions. This is an incredible opportunity to get lots and lots of free English lessons and really boost your abilities in using the language. But take it seriously. And this is exactly what past marathon graduates have told us. So that is our advice to you. So are you ready to start the marathon and really improve your English? Let's do this. All you need to do now is click on that link in the description box, head over to Lingoda and use our voucher code STUDY9. If you have any questions, head over to Lingoda and approach them directly and their very helpful team indeed will be able to answer all your questions. So that is all for today's video guys, but thank you very much for watching and to those marathon runners, good luck. I hope it goes well. And please tell us about your experience in the comments of this video or drop us an email. Give us a like if you've enjoyed the video and would like to see more conversational English lessons like this, where we give you expressions that you can use when you move abroad. Thanks very much and see you again soon for another video.